Got something big, boys. Oh, sh Oh, sh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. That can't be good. There's something about going offshore all by my lonesome self that is just so therapeutical. There's some big storms brewing over there, which is, that is offshore. That is where I'm going. For a moment, I was like, maybe I won't go offshore today. But then I realized if I don't, if I, if I don't go fishing today, I might be depressed. And if I'm depressed, I won't get a good night's sleep. I'm going no matter what. Check it out. I got a bag of frozen herring, two blocks of chum. Yes, I went and got myself some pre-rigged ballyhoo. I'm also going to try and catch some ballyhoo if we do patchery fishing. I brought light action rods. I brought my big 50 wides for trolling. This is what we caught the wahoo on uh, the last video. Some medium action rods. The rough plan for today is to head out of Key Largo and go out to the patch reefs. Look for a patch reef that looks good. I'll probably anchor up, throw some chum down, do a little bit of fishing, maybe get some snapper, grouper, I don't know. We'll see what's biting on the patch reef. If that doesn't work out, we'll head offshore and we'll troll some ballyhoo, troll some plugs, and we'll see what's going on offshore. Hopefully the boat turns on. That's really the most important part of everything. Will the engine turn on? Moment of truth. Yeehaw! All right, let's get to it. Okay, she is untied. Whew, she's looking good. We have arrived! Ha <laughs> ha! The promised land. I'm a little bit off the chain, call me insane, but the fact remains that I am the Go big, go I'm a fucking psycho. Throw down the anchor! Watch out below! All right, turn the engine off. Ooh, peace and quiet. We do have a pretty nice swell. I don't know if you can see it, but it's probably like a three, three foot swell. So we got some nice rocking, but it's not too bad. It's not choppy, which is nice. Gonna put a chum bag out. There's fish down there. Okay, this is good. This is good. Oh, I forgot my cutting board. No! I'll just have to make do without. I got some Tournament Master, the blue chum box. It's my favorite stuff. It's the most fine ground. It's got menhaden oil in it and the fish freaking love it. I see a lot of Bermuda chubs down there, unfortunately. The only bait I have out here right now are these, uh, the redfin herring, which are completely frozen rock solid. I probably should have defrosted them, but but that's that's what they look like. We're out here on the patch reefs. Got the chum out. I got my threadfin herring defrosting and some salt water in that bucket over there. We are in 34 feet of water. Literally, if I took a rock and I threw it as far out offshore as I could, it would probably land in about 60 to 80 feet of water. We are right on the reef's edge here. And if I took a rock and threw it as far towards land as I could, it probably would, probably would land in about 20 feet of water. So we're literally right on that edge where it goes from 20 feet down to 100 feet. It's been a long time since I've done some solo patch reef fishing. I forgot the cutting board. There's something else I forgot. I already forgot what I forgot. But uh, what we're gonna be running today, I'm gonna, I got these light action rods set up with uh, knocker rigs. A knocker rig is just an egg sinker 
basically straight to the hook. That's all it is. Super simple setup. If you want to support the channel, rwboutdoors.com. We sell knocker rigs and a whole bunch of fishing rigs you can use out here on the Patrice and offshore. All our rigs are tied and made right here in Florida and we ship everything out of Florida. Yeehaw, baby. That's the game plan. I'm gonna put some herring on some knocker rigs. We're gonna send that down. Oh, damn, my herring. A wave just knocked the herring over. I got herring juice all over the deck. Woo! Ah! I found this bucket top. I can use it as a cutting table. There we go, knocker rig, circle hook with a piece of thread fin herring. We'll just toss, toss him right on down there. So that bait is sitting on the bottom on this rod and then I'm gonna have my light action rod with another knocker rig and I will just fish two rods. And there we go, piece of thread fin herring on this one and I will toss this guy maybe over, over that way. That seems lucky. That's a lucky direction. I feel good about this. I had a nibble there. What was that? Did they take my bait? They took my bait. A little slimy bastard. I got a couple nibbles again and then it stopped. I think they stole my bait. This is turning into one of those patch reef days where I just, they just steal everything. I could switch to a smaller hook, but the thing is, I'm not trying to catch a small fish, so, uh, you know. Yup, I've been robbed again. Mm. Sometimes I find the tail to work really well. I used to never use tails, but... Let's see if that's the secret sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah! Yes! Fish on! Fish on! Woo! Suck it, fish! Yeah! What do we got? It kind of feels all right. It feels decent-ish. I don't... Oh! Oh! <gasps> Mangrove snapper! Yes! That's a keeper! Just like that! On the knocker rig, we got ourselves dinner! On the tail! Did I not say the tail? Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! That is a good mangrove snapper. That is dinner in the bag. I'm gonna slit his throat, bleed him out, and then we'll throw him on ice. Oh sh! Oh sh! We got something big. We got something big. Got something big, boys. Oh sh! Oh sh! Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. That can't be good. Uh oh. Oh no, I'm about to get spooled. Oh boys, I'm gonna get spooled. Ah! Oh, he broke me off. Oh. Gosh darn it. I'm pretty sure that I had a nice fish on and then a shark grabbed him and just took off. Oh, wow, he took a lot of line. <laughs> Whew, that got my adrenaline pumping. Broke it clean off. Just a clean cut off. Wow. Hey, I still got like a chewed up tail on this one. I might as well drop that back down. Oh, oh. I'm getting bit already. Oh, I got a fish on! I got another fish on! I better reel in quick because I think there's sharks down there. -hoo -hoo. Come to daddy, what we got? A grouper, a strawberry grouper, a rock hind, whatever you want to call it. These are really cool looking fish. Look at them in the light. They got these like red spots on them. 
Really cool fish. I'm gonna need my hook back, buddy. Or they want that tail. Come on, swallow it, swallow it, buddy. Something's pecking at it, it doesn't feel big. I wanna get rid of that and I wanna find the big guy. Oh, oh, they stole my bait again. You know, if I catch a big mutton on this light action rod, 10 pound braid with 12 pound mono on it, or 20 pound, I think I'm gonna have a problem. I don't think that's good. So I might re-rig this rod and use that on the bottom instead. Oh, oh, I just got a big hit. Come on. Oh, oh, that felt like a big slurp. I think something just slurped up my bait. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, I think he went into a rock. It was definitely a fish. I felt him slurp it up, and then he must have swam into a crevice. It was a sneaky little fish. All right, well, that's a bummer. Sometimes, if you give them some slack, they'll swim out of the hole, and then you can get them, but it's like a 50-50 shot. We'll see, let's see. I gave him some slack, I gave him some slack. Hi! Ugh, didn't work. Sometimes uh, you want to switch up your angles so you can try to pull it from here, maybe. That can sometimes pull the uh, your hook back out of the hole. Nope. Uh, yeah, it broke off. Be really nice to catch just one more snapper. That way I have dinner for Caitlin and I. Then I can go trolling, you know, knowing that I got dinner in the box. But if I leave now... With only one snapper in the box, then I am taking quite a risk. So I'm really hoping I can get a snapper, another snapper here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we got here? Oh, a yellow tail snapper. Oh, hello there. What are you doing down there? That might be time to switch to my yellow tail hooks if you're around. Little yellowtail snapper. Can you tell why they call him yellowtail? They got a big old yellowtail. Goodbye, buddy. Okay, these are actually our new prototype yellowtail hooks. Look at these guys. They got a feather on them. Um, I kind of want to trim that feather up, just like maybe take a half an inch off of it. I trimmed like a half an inch off the feather. I'm just going to put a little bit of meat on there and I'm just going to flick that around down there. Let's see if they go for it. I feel good about this. I feel real good about this. Yep, yep. something grabbed it. Something grabbed the yellow tail hook. Woo yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, a fat one. A fat yellow tail went right for it. Oh. God, this is this is the happiest moment of my life. Now we got two fish in the bag. Oh, that's a good one. Woo! Oh, he gobbled it up. He gobbled it. Oh, look at it. He gobbled it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna slit his throat. There, I pulled his organs out too. Sending out the yellow tail hook again with a piece of um, herring stuck to it. I got a good feeling about this. You know, the fish are turned up. They see that jig and they're like, oh, hello. You must be the famous South Florida Fishing Channel jig I've been hearing about. I heard you were delicious. Yeah, little do they know. Oh, ooh, I'm getting a hit. Something just gave it a good thump. Oh, 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 
Ah, oh, something grabbed it and ran. Oh, oh, it's back! Oh, jeez! It's toying with me! Oh, it's taking it! Oh, what would it the fuck? It stole my bait. I don't take too kindly to thieves. I'm gonna try this side of the boat again. This is the lucky side for me. You always want to be switching things up when you're fishing. You know, if cast it off this side of the boat, next cast, try it on the other side of the boat. I don't know. My number one tip to catching more fish is to just keep on trying. Never give up, keep trying different things, different baits, different hooks, different spots, and you will come back with freaking bait. That is the South Florida Fishing Channel guarantee. I got no bait on this guy, but I'm gonna chuck him out. I'm just gonna jig him. I'm gonna see if something will eat this thing without any bait. Okay, I'm gonna let it sink for just a few more seconds here. All right, now I'm just gonna jig it, kind of like flick it, reel in, flick it, reel in, flick it, reel in. Give it a real erratic motion. Oh, I got a hit. Oh, oh. I thought I was gonna get lucky there. Oh, I see them, they're chasing it. They're, uh, what are those? They are, uh, what are those things? Like blue runners or something? Oh, oh, I'm on! He hit it while I was reeling it in, okay. Yeah, buddy, oh, wee! Oh, this is what hit it last time when I was, had no bait on it, I was just jigging it. Look at that guy. That would be a, a great bait. <laughs> Farewell, my little friend. Oh God, there I had him. I had him, but he, yeah, he did. He got off. I really want to troll right now, so, uh, I might, I might call it on this so we can troll a little bit. Yeah, boys, who's got dinner? This guy does. There, put him on some ice. So we're gonna troll these pre-rigged ballyhoo. Normally I rig my own ballyhoo. I mean, I sell ballyhoo rigs online, but here I am, I bought some pre-bought ones because I didn't have any ballyhoo. There are some ballyhoo behind the boat. And I'm thinking I should try to cast net some, so next time I won't have to buy these, but that's just where I'm at in life. Let's uh, try to throw the cast net and see what happens. Yeah, baby! Yeah! Dinner's already in the box. It's not a big dinner. But it's gonna be a good dinner. Now I'm gonna to try to catch something big. I don't have like godlike cast net throwing skills, but all of you guys that have been watching me for a, for a while now, y'all know how bad I've been at throwing a cast net. Huge improvement. Every time I throw it now, it opens up at least decently. I've been catching bait. Things are looking good. Things are looking good. All right, time to do some trolling. Bam! So low trolling! We're doing it! Everything looks good. Come on, boys. Something get hit. It's fading hour, baby! Oh. My engine just shut off. <coughs> low oil. But I put oil in it. It's got plenty of oil. What do you mean low oil? Why is it telling me low oil? Look, it says low oil alarm, but there's 35% oil left in it. And I just put some, I just put some in it like uh, an hour ago. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe there's an air bubble in the uh, thing. I try to put the meat on the boat, but the sun's going down and I'm ready to go home, flay up some snapper. It's not a lot of meat. Today was a, you know, some days you put the meat on the boat, like last time we trolled out here, and some days you just have a really good time. 
And you put some meat on the boat. Well, she needs oil again. She's a thirsty one. Of course she wants this to happen when we're offshore and it's a wavy day out. I mean, there's oil in there, so I don't know why the low oil alarm's going off, but I guess I'll just give her more oil, I mean. Oh my God, I am a God, I am a God, I am a God. I'm not spilling anything. I rule. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Okay, I may have spilled a couple drops. That's what shirts are for. Okay. I sure hope the low oil alarm is gone. Come on. Because, I mean, there's like, there's over a gallon of oil in there, so. It says I got 70% oil. Yeehaw! Crystal clear water right there. Oh, sweet home. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, look who it is. Mouse. Hey, buddy. Captain Elliot and I are just doing our morning chores. Fillet the fish from yesterday. I'm one of those people that once I clean the boat after a day of fishing, you know, sunset time, the no seams come out. I'd rather just throw the fish on ice, fillet them in the morning. It's a chilly morning today. The temperature has dropped. I think we're like in the 60s now. Oh yeah, still on ice. There's a beer in there too. I wonder if I should have a morning beer. Here we go. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah, the Wahoo? That thing was huge. Yellowtail is a much softer meat. I mean, my knife just slides through it like butter. We got all our fillets. Remember, with your carcasses, 
poke the eyeballs out so they don't float because if your fish float, they will float and land on your neighbor's beach and then nobody is happy. Thank you for your fillets, Mr. Mangrove Snapper. Now they will feed the crabs. Honestly, I can sit here all day and watch the crabs and fish eat the carcasses. It's pretty cool. Check it out. There's our bag of meat. I've been thinking long and hard what we're gonna do with our mangrove snapper and our yellowtail snapper. Are you ready for this, Kayla? We're gonna do, well, I went to Publix with the intentions of doing a creamy lemon dill sauce on the fish over a bed of rice. But I just got back from Publix. They didn't have heavy cream, they only had heavy whipping cream. Is that the same thing as heavy you're, cream? You're asking the wrong person. I would think so. You're drinking it. Mmm. Tastes like heavy cream. Tastes like heavy whipping cream. Wow. But Publix had no heavy cream. We're gonna make this work somehow. They didn't have dill. So I was so desperate to find dill that I, I found this plant in the back shelf of Publix and it kind of looks like dill, doesn't it, on the top? Did you Google what dill looks like? I don't I go. This this is what dill looks like. Okay, I don't like know. Like that. You're the, you're the chef here. But the person working there was like, "Oh, you're looking for dill." They're like, "Don't put that on your food. That ain't dill." <laughs> and I was like, "Listen, I'm desperate. I'm trying to make a YouTube video right now, and I need dill. We're not putting this in our food. I don't know Vegetable? what this is. Look at it." Who is you? I'm going to do some brainstorming and figure out what kind of sauce I'm gonna create. But in the meantime, I got a couple of lobster that we had frozen for a mini season. And I got some water boiling over here with some salt in it. And I'm going to boil these two lobster tails while I figure out how I'm gonna make my sauce. We're gonna do something special with these lobsters. You Every, see the desk? Everybody's supervising. They're extremely excited. I've been doing a lot of contemplating. And I think I finally figured out how I want to make the sauce. I got a pan heating up. We're going to start with classic butter, of course. And I don't measure anything. I just put in what I have, however much I have. And then at the end, you can always add extra flavoring or more cream to even things out. Ooh, hear that garlic sizzle? Mm-hmm. Butter melting, garlic sizzling. Y'all see that? Mm-hmm. Gonna take a little bit of the red, white, and blue outdoors, garlic and onion, just a little bit, just on the butter. Give the butter a little flavoring. Okay, gonna mix that up. The butter is browning a little bit, which is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. The butter is browned, the garlic is browned. I got myself a lemon, and we're gonna squeeze that lemon juice in. Woo! One more, party's not over yet. Now we're gonna add ourselves some Sauvignon Blanc white wine. Use whatever white wine you want, but this one's not that sweet, and I don't like to use sweet wine for cooking. That's why I picked this one. Sauvignon Blanc, mm, and it tastes good too, out of the straight out of the bottle. That's the best way to drink it. Greek yogurt, lemon and cream. Hold on, let me try this first. Yeah, first right. Thing. Interesting. Hmm. Hold on, let me try it. Well, it wasn't on the garlic fork. Mm-hmm. Ew. This will be good in there. It's fine. And on top of that, we will just add a little bit of heavy whipping cream. Black pepper and cayenne pepper. Two peppers that you don't want to mess with. Just give it a nice dash of that. Nice twist of that. And we can't forget the capers. Never forget the capers.
Am I missing anything? Oh yeah, of course, look what we found. I found some dill, but it's dried dill and not fresh dill. It smells like hay for, for a, ho <laughs> a horse at, in a barn or something. But I'm gonna add just a touch. I don't wanna make this taste like hay. But. And then we'll just give this a slow simmer and just kind of reduce it for a little bit. And that is our sauce. I might, might add more cream. I don't know, we'll see how it looks. Mm -hmm. I put in the rest of the Greek yogurt, so that's empty now. I added another dose of heavy whipping cream. And now I'm gonna add a touch, just a splash of cornstarch. I don't wanna put too much in there. Mm-hmm, yes, it's not cold. That'll be good for now. Ooh! It smells great. Our sauce is simmering. Time to make the fish. We're gonna put some cornmeal, some Bob's Red Mill cornmeal in a bag. And then we're gonna take the Red, White, and Blue Outdoors Reaper because everything is better with a little bit of Reaper. Give it a good old healthy Reapering. If you can't handle the heat, you know, stay away from the Reaper, but if you're like me. So now we got Reaper mixed in with cornmeal. And in this pot right here, we have some hot peanut oil. Now the best way to test test it if it's hot is to lick it. Get at it, man. Actually, no, the best way to test if it's hot, you take a little bit of cornmeal and just... Oh, you see it's bubbling and stuff? It's probably almost hot enough. Here's our fish. Can you tell what snapper that is? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. The yellowtail is a little more white and the mangrove is a little more pink, but you yeah. can hardly tell. So you just throw them all in there, just. Shake and bake, shake and bake, shake and bake. You see the cat? It's the cat in the head. If you don't know what the cat in the head is, just Google it. It's worth it. <laughs> Y'all ready to drop this in? Woo, look at that piece of fish. That looks good, don't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The fish has been going. It's got that nice golden brown crisp to it. Ready for a flip. We got our asparagus on. Just put a little bit of olive oil on there and then I'm gonna add a little bit of pink sea salt. Oh, and of course, uh, a little bit of black pepper too. Best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Lobster. Okay, the fish is done. They're like the perfect little crisp. Our fish is good. Now we're gonna prepare the lobster. Ooh, lobster, huh? Mm -hmm. Good thing I got the husk knife. Perfect. Bam! Look at that. You see that? Freaking mean tool right there. You want to know a little bit more about this? All right, I'll tell you a little bit more. I've been using the husk knife for many months now. It's still in pristine, clean, no rust condition. The blade is still so sharp, you just want to lick it. This Japanese-inspired knife looks so smooth and slick. You just always want to pull it out and show it to your guests, even if you're not cooking. Warning, it can scare them sometimes when you pull out a knife for no reason. But you can't help it when it looks this good. How about you get yourself a husk knife at a huge discount by going to husk.club forward slash SFFC. That's right, that stands for South Florida Fishing Channel. When you go to my link, you'll see a huge discount and you'll see that it's the ultimate camping knife. But really, it's the ultimate life knife. I already told you, but they'll tell you again. It's got perfect grip. It's precisely crafted to the last detail. And it's the sharpest of them all. I already knew that. Now you know that. If you want a knife where ancient tradition meets modern man, check out my link and get yourself one. You won't regret it. Yeah, how about that? 
my god. Mm, you only lick the knives that you love. That's a rule that I um, live by. There's our lobster. I'm gonna pull the meat out of the tail. Woohoo! Dice it up. Right in the top. It's game time. We got our lobster. We're gonna chop him up into little pieces. Oh yeah. Then we're gonna take the red, white, and blue outdoors base side. I love the base side. Mm -hmm. We're gonna just, we're just gonna give it a nice like, just a dazzle, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's try a piece, shall we? Sure. I could eat all that lobster just like that. I bet you can. Maybe I will. <laughs> all right, let's make a plate here. Everything is ready to go. Grab your plate. We'll start with a smack of rice. That looks good. We'll take two fish fillets. See that? Take a nice scoop of lobster. Put that on top. And then we're gonna bedazzle it with some freaking sauce. Hot. Everything's always a little hot around here. I'm gonna do a quick taste test review here and then and then we're gonna have some dinner time. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I wanna start with a piece of the fish. Alright, here we go. Here's the fish with the lemon butter sauce on it. Oh, you're gonna like this. <laughs> it's that white wine lemony sauce. I guess it's okay without the dill. The lobster. Wow. If you're watching this, try this recipe. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment in the below. Leave a leave a comment <laughs> below. A comment below. What did I say? Leave a comment in below and don't do blow that. your nose. Thanks for watching guys. We had a great trip out there. You don't always have to catch the biggest fish to have some of the best dinners. It's party time. I'm gonna be a responsible human being and swallow before I keep talking. Oh, look at you. Cheers. Mm -hmm.